Welcome to our video lesson on Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God by John Edwards. I wanted to take a moment to introduce you to what you're going to do to complete the skills associated with this lesson. There are a lot of skills, and so I wanted to just kind of look at our module and make sure that we understood what we're doing. So first of all, when you look at the module on your Canvas page, you'll notice a few things. One of the first things that I want to point out is if you're feeling a little bit lost and you're not quite sure what I need to do next, you can always go right here to the Angry God lesson directions. And that's just going to outline all of the steps, all in one place, just in case you've forgotten. You'll also remember that we're trying to work on our feedback to each other as students, as well as for Miss Kirk to have a little bit more of a conversation with you. And so we've got our back channel conversation link here. I didn't think that we used that very well with Plymouth Plantation, but I'm hoping that the more that we use this process, the more we'll be able to help each other to master the skills and build onto our content knowledge so that we can be American literature experts in the end. You'll notice that your um, Nearpod has been divided by two points. I did not put this out there yet because you, I didn't want you to have the passcode if you haven't unlocked it. So the first one, you can have the code. Um, again, you may want to check and verify that that's still the most accurate code or that that's the code that is assigned to you. Once you go through the Nearpod, you'll notice a few things. First of all, you have your imagery assessment and a figurative language assessment. These are skills from English 9 and 10 that you should have mastered, but without knowing what they are, it's going to be a challenge for you to identify and analyze them in the text. If you do not pass the quiz, then you do have to take the JRC, just like everything else. Once you move beyond that, you're going to look at rhetorical appeal. Now, here there's a keyword that's different, that you don't have this word in uh, when you're looking at it in other contents and other classes. And the word here that we're looking at is appeal. So in the past, you may have talked about rhetorical devices, um, and all of those devices fall into a category. And what we're doing in looking at those categories is really making sure that we know what is the function of the appeal. So we're taking it to the next level with the expectations for this. If you pass the skills test, um, and it's very possible that you may know the information. Some of our teachers in the 10th grade year did an extension with the rhetorical appeals. Some did not. So if you do pass that, you do not have to do the JRC. If you do not pass that, you do have the JRC. Now, I am going to point out right here that academic integrity that we've talked about, because if you look at it and you know that there's some parts you don't get, go through and look at the notes on the information. Maybe you're solid with imagery, but you struggle with recognizing extended metaphor. Look into figurative language and identify what that is. You'll move into the next step of the lesson, and it's going to be that literary background for the text. You will have a few notes there and complete the JRC for that as well. Just in case you don't have Wi-Fi, I know your textbook requires Wi-Fi, but I have outlined and included for you the images of the page so that you'll have it. Once you finish reading the text, again, you will have your text-dependent questions, and I'll have a guide for you. We're going to focus on the skills that we've looked at. So we're going to focus on analyzing the imagery and the figurative language, as well as identifying the rhetorical appeal and the function of that appeal and the effect on the audience. So then you will, of course, take that quiz in the very end, just like we do with every passing text. Overall big picture objective here. Uh, you know that you're going to have the smaller chunks, and you know that you'll have a smaller objective for each individual part of the lesson. But through the study of Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, you're going to be able to identify imagery in the text and to explain its role in, in rhetoric. So it's not just about what is it anymore. We're looking about how does it help to persuade people. We want you to be able to look at figurative language. But again, it's not just can you identify it, can you tell me what it is, you're going to have to explain the impact again on the audience. We want you to evaluate the purpose of the sermon genre. 
This is important because we talked about where the texts at the start of our country come from. Because of the value that they placed on religion, those documents were all based on what was important to them. The history and the social aspect drives the literature that we see. I also want for you to be able to explain why John Edwards held great power over the audience. Um, when we talk about what he was doing, he gave this speech for six hours, staring at the wall above them in a very monotone voice. Why did the audience have the reaction that they're documented to have had? And you're going to look at that as well. And then, who knows, maybe you're going to be able to apply some of those strategies and get your way more often at home or even against me. Finally, you will create an image from the text and align it with the most powerful quote to demonstrate the author's purpose. You'll notice this little throwback here because I don't want to let author's purpose go to the wayside. We want to bring back in that purpose pie. You're going to find a quote that is effective at establishing purpose. And then that is your enrichment activity for this section.